Hi, welcome to Resplendent Daughter video blog. It's such a pleasure to have you with me today. My name is Gina, and we're going to look into the scriptures together, but first let's open in prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for every good gift that you give us, and we know that all good gifts come from you. I pray that as we look into one of your most precious gifts, your holy word, that you would open our eyes and ears and hearts to what you have for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Are you a hoarder? In America, greed is pretty much celebrated. We call it the American dream. Those who achieve it are either applauded, congratulated, and celebrated, or they're vilified because they don't deserve it. The latter is a phenomenon that's come into the public square only in the last 20 years or so. One of the mantras of the American dream is, he who dies with the most toys wins. The goal, then, is to get as much stuff as possible. And we worship our stuff. Idolatry. The text for the next three posts is Colossians 3, verses 5 through 11. Today, we're going to focus on verses 5 through 7, which say the following. So, put to death whatever in your nature belongs to the earth. Sexual immorality, impurity, shameful passion, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming on the sons of disobedience. You also lived your life this way at one time, when you used to live among them. Paul gives this list of behaviors the hallmarks of the evil nature, for the most part, they appear to be lustful and sexual sins. But then, at the end, he throws greed into the mix. At first glance, it doesn't seem to fit, does it? When that list of behaviors is examined, though, the root of all of them is selfishness. Greed is no exception, as it, too, is fueled by selfishness and stoked by pride. This is not the way of Jesus Christ, who, by his own admission, had nowhere to lay his head. After Christ died, there was no reading of the will, no disbursement of his assets. His cloak and his other clothes were his only possessions the shirt off his back, so to speak. So what would Jesus have us to do in this modern age? How much in this world is a godly enough? Should the Christian's goal be to amass as much money and as many possessions as he or she possibly can? Will doing so win God's approval? Will it draw us closer to him or to each other? There's nothing wrong with being materially successful, particularly if we use our assets to further the kingdom of God in this world. God will often financially prosper people so that they can glorify him by advancing his kingdom. Rich people can tithe more, do more, give more. God led me, for example, although I'm not what people would generally agree is a, a rich person, but because I'm now a fixed income retiree, but um, God led me into a fulfilling career, which had at the end of it a retirement benefit, and I'm living off that pension now, which frees me up to write this blog most days to make video blogs, and to use my time to further spread the gospel. The problem comes in when we make these material things, which we accumulate over time, the focus of our love, our time, 
and devotion and or when they come to limit our effectiveness for God, the creep of idolatry is gradual and insidious. We become successful in the worldly sense after which sinful pride grabs a foothold. We then begin to credit ourselves with our success and the vicious cycle of idolatry repeats itself. Unless we, through the power of the Holy Spirit, are watchful for this creep in our lives, and when we discover it, take deliberate steps to slay it, we're in danger of becoming spiritual and material hoarders. The message version states it like this, and that means killing off everything connected with that way of death go into that slaying aspect. If we listen to the Holy Spirit, he will let us know how much in our lives is enough. All we have needed, his hand is provided because he is faithful. And he will direct the use of the tools which he has placed in our hands, which he has graced us with. It's up to us as his disciples to obediently follow his leading in that regard. Let's pray. Father, thank you for provision, for giving us everything that we need to do what you have called us to do. You provide what we need for each day's work. Now it is up to us to do it. Then you will provide the necessities for tomorrow. We trust you with our tomorrows. In this, Lord, you teach us about your Lordship and how to walk by faith. Please, give us the discernment to recognize the pitfalls called selfishness and pride so that we can avoid them. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being my guest here at our vlog ministry of Resplendent Daughter. I hope that today's content has blessed you, and if it has, that you'll share it with others. If you'd like to see more of these vlogs, you can find them here by subscribing to the Empower YouTube channel. You'll also find at this channel the vlogs of some of my Christian brothers and sisters who are so gifted and talented at sharing what God has done in their lives. You can visit my written blog if you so choose and comment there. The address is on your screen. You can also see my Twitter handle, and I'd love to hear from you on Twitter as well.